So we've talked about the maximum likelihood estimator and how to find it. One reason people like to use maximum likelihood is because that estimator has some really nice properties. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about those properties. Uh, and just to quickly summarize, and then we'll go into more detail, under some certain regularity conditions, the maximum likelihood estimator has the properties of consistency, asymptotic normality, asymptotic efficiency, and invariance. And we're going to talk about each one of those in this video. But first, let's talk about these regularity conditions. Um, everything I'm going to describe here is, is true only if these three regularity conditions are met. Uh, first three derivatives of the log likelihood uh, of the log of the PDF with respect to theta are continuous and finite for almost all y and for all theta. The conditions necessary to obtain the expectations of the first and second derivatives of the log of the PDF are met. And for all values of theta, the absolute value of this third derivative is less than a function that has a finite expectation. What does all that mean? It's basically just saying that our, our, our PDFs are kind of well behaved in such a way that um, we can take some derivatives and some moment and, and, and find some moments of them. Um, I think you'd have to work hard to find some PDFs that don't meet these properties. Uh, so, so in probably every case that, that you're going to encounter in, in kind of daily econometrics work, these are going to be true. But just wanted to highlight that there are a few conditions here I'm trying to do something really crazy uh, with some really weird probability density functions. Maybe something doesn't quite work right. All right, but the first property is consistency. This is kind of the, I think for a lot of people, one of the bare minimum minima that they're looking for in, a, in an estimator. Consistency says that the maximum likelihood estimator, that theta hat, converges in probability to the true parameter values. In this slide and in all future slides, theta zero is going to represent the true parameter values, the things that we're trying to estimate, and theta hat will, es will, 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 will denote the actual estimators themselves. So this estimator is consistent. It converges in probability to the true parameter values. What that means kind of in words is that as our sample grows to infinity, this estimator becomes vanishingly close to the true parameter values. We're kind of getting the right estimate. That's, that's good. That's, like I said, kind of the bare minimum that we'll often look for is that we're actually, as we have more data, it's taking us closer and closer and ultimately kind of as close as possible to the true value that we're wanting to estimate. Great, that's a great first property. Second property, is that the asymptotic distribution of the maximum likelihood estimator is normal with a mean at that true parameter value and this known variance where here's the math for the variance. We're going to talk about the variance uh, more in the next video, but basically the idea here is that we know asymptotically that this thing is normally distributed and we know what the mean and the variance are, which are, which are both really, really nice. Um, the variance depends on this uh, this second derivative thing and the expectation and the inverse. So, so th this thing's a little complicated. And like I said, in the next video, we're going to talk about the variance component specifically. Um, but basically the super high level uh, here is that we are more certain of the maximum likelihood estimator. The variance is smaller when the, when the likelihood function has more curvature. So when we can really easily define where a maximum occurs, whereas when it's pretty flat and it's harder to determine, is this the maximum or, or is something nearby also, you know, could that be the maximum? When there's less curvature there, uh, the variance is, is, is relatively large. I think that'll make more sense in the next video, but this is, you know, having, having an asymptotically normal distribution with known mean and variance is very useful in terms of, of, of estimating uh, the variance. All right, the maximum likelihood estimator is also asymptotically efficient, meaning that it achieves the cremer rau lower bound. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the cremer rau lower bound much other than saying that there's, there's this kind of theoretical idea that there's some, some lower bound on how small the variance can get for a consistent estimator. And 
the maximum likelihood estimator hits that lower bound. The variance of the maximum likelihood estimator achieves that lower bound. So what we're saying is that no consistent estimator is gonna have a lower asymptotic variance than the maximum likelihood estimator. So even if you had multiple consistent estimators from, to choose from, MLE is gonna give you the, the estimator with the lowest asymptotic variance. So that's another great reason. We want our variances to be as small as possible so we can be as, as kind of precise as possible about our, about our parameter estimates. And that's what we're gonna get from maximum likelihood estimation. And then finally, the maximum likelihood estimator is invariant, kind of one-to-one -one kind of transformations or, or, or functional, functional transformations. The idea here is, suppose you wanna know the maximum likelihood estimator of gamma zero which is a function of some parameters. You don't wanna necessarily know the maximum likelihood estimator of the parameters themselves, but you wanna know the maximum likelihood estimator of a function of parameters. Well, that maximum likelihood estimator is just going to be the function or functions applied to the maximum likelihood estimators of the thetas. So in other words, you want to take, you want to find the, the maximum likelihood estimator of a function of parameters. That's going to be equal to the function of the maximum likelihood estimator of the parameters. It's kind of words are a little confusing. Even looking at the math is a little confusing. But in other words, we're kind of saying you can, uh, you can switch whether the maximum like whether the estimation is occurring outside the function on or you know kind of after the function is applied or before the function is applied and it gets us to the same place and the point here is that sometimes you want to get an estimate of a function of parameters but maybe that function is just really complex and so it's going to be kind of challenging to to, to work the distributional assumptions all the way through your function and, and that's just going to be mathematically you know difficult and so instead, you can actually estimate the underlying parameters themselves and then just plug those into your function. So that's another nice property. Those were the four properties that make maximum likelihood estimators really nice. Um, I kind of left you hanging with, with talking about the variance, though, and I said we'd talk about that in the next video, and that is exactly what we're going to do in this next video, talking about the variance estimator for the maximum likelihood estimator.